For children who grew up in a pastor's home can often feel that extra pressure to act in such a way as not to bring unwanted attention on the home and the ministry. I can tell you my four children can relate to that, and so can my next guest. Solomon Ikwiwu's dad was a pastor in Nigeria, and even though he made a commitment to follow Jesus at a young age, that didn't stop him from partying and getting drunk and doing things that he knew he probably shouldn't have been doing. Solomon, welcome to 100 Huntley Street. How you doing, Greg? Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. So you grew up in a pastor's home. Your dad is a, is a man of God. Yes, I did. Yeah, so how, how was life for you? Life in Nigeria was amazing. You know, I grew up in a very godly home. Amazing parents. They taught us the word. We went to church every Sunday. Uh, I went to church, though, out of a religious obligation. And, uh, you know, growing up, I had just six siblings, and uh, it was just, uh, life was very beautiful. And uh, I'm so thankful that, uh, all, that the parent, all that my parents instilled in me has played a part in my journey this far. So what happened? Why, why did you decide, hey, you know, maybe there's something else out here, you know, besides the church life, partying and, you know, the world, I guess? I think uh, it was more of a do-based. So growing up, I, my parents were very strict, but, uh, you know, a lot of African parents are strict. Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I went to church just out of, uh, out of fear for my parents, not out of fear for God. So I just felt in my heart that I wanted to please my parents. I went, I was pretty active in the church, went every Tuesday, Sunday, but my heart wasn't really in it. So eventually I just, you know, just the wrong friends and I just found a desire just to party and uh, you know, almost every day of the week. And there were times on Saturdays I'd go party and Sundays I'd go to church. And it was just a very interesting season in my life. Must have been a lot of conflict inside because, you know, you believed in God. It yes, wasn't it that you had, you know, renounced yes. the faith and, oh, that's it, I'm an atheist now and I'm going to go party. So there must have been that real tug of war inside mm -hmm. Solomon. Yeah, it was just, uh, there was no desire. You know, I believe it is possible to be in a church and not be in Christ. And I think at the time it was just, uh, you know, surrounded with the wrong, you know, people around me, temptations. And uh, I just wanted to just explore, you know, and I was a very shy kid. So one of the ways I wanted to express myself was just doing things just to, you know, have a sense of control and, and have fun. What were your parents, especially your dad, the mm -hmm. pastor, what mm -hmm. was he thinking about his son Solomon acting out or were you kind of keeping it hidden? My parents didn't know about this. I lived a double life, so I would, you know, my parents would of course say about me then, Solomon is a very good kid. But behind the scenes, I was just secretly living a different kind of life they had no idea about. So what happened, Solomon? Uh, just at the time, you know, at the time being, just uh, a time came that, you know, I just felt God calling my life. I just felt God talking me to, to come back to Him. But I just continue. I just continually rejected that call because I enjoyed just the partying life and drinking. But the time came that I just knew that you know it was God. And I remember there was a night I went to sleep. Uh, I just couldn't sleep that night. I was up all night, and it was as if the Lord was wrestling with me. And I knew then that the Lord meant business. But what really happened was there was a change in my heart. There was, there was a shift in my desire. I just got tired of the whole party lifestyle, partying scene. Coming to a place, just uh, saying to myself, there has to be more out there, there has to be more. And I think what really happened was, you know, I came to Canada at uh, 19, June 98, I came to Canada, and you know, I continued that lifestyle, but I think it was, uh, I believe it was when I went to uh, college, and the Lord just led me to a different ministry in college, and from college ministry, I uh, just connected with the right people and just really the pressure was off. So you were, so back in Nigeria though, yeah. you're still feeling the stirring. Yes. You come mm. to Canada, you mm. had some illness as well. I did. And uh, that almost bankrupted your parents. Mm. Were you feeling guilty? Were you angry at God? I was. So at about the age seven or eight, I had my, I had an appendix, a surgery, I almost died. I had a near death experience, appendix. And you know, my mom went bankrupt. So throughout my childhood, I was always sick. I was a sick child. And I just always wondered, like, why me? That was my question. Why me? I was always sick. My parents, you know, pretty much went bankrupt. I remember my, I remember my mom borrowed money on several occasions just to look after me. And I just really wondered, like, 
you know, I've heard this preaching every Sunday at church that God loves me, God loves me, but why am I always sick? And I, people were praying for you? Of course, yeah. I had, my, my parents are very, you know, they pray warriors, they prayed over me, their friends prayed over me, but I just really believe the devil was out to get me and just ruin my life. But okay, Solomon, we're gonna take a break, mm -hmm. and you come to Canada, and uh, things got rough here too, unfortunately for you. Yes, you dealt with a lot of, you know, uh, racism, mm -hmm. and you, you suffered, you know, some beatings and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but through that, there's some good things as well. We'll mm -hmm. come back with Solomon right after this.